Let's bring in Congressman Mark Amade, a Republican of Nevada. Uh, Congressman Amade, thank you so much for being here with me, sir. And I'd like to ask you a couple questions, your response first to Congressman King. And also, can you clarify your position on this issue? I have read your statement, but I'm not sure what you want to see done. Well, uh, uh, I guess, Alex, to start out with, uh, yesterday was my 72-month anniversary for being in the Congress. And I've said throughout that 72 months, it's, it's pretty hard to defend nothing. Um, so if what the administration is doing pushes Congress, which has a clear constitutional duty to regulate uh, naturalization, which to finally do something since it's been 31 years, yay. Um, I've looked at both of the bills. The, uh, the, the, the Democrats are calling theirs the DREAM Act. The Republican one, they talk about the three basic similar things. I think there's plenty there to agree on. It's a good first step for immigration. Uh, and, and so I, I'm looking forward to and, and want to say thanks if, if the fact that the president's meeting with uh, Mr. Schumer and Ms. Pelosi, if that gets us uh, moving on taking the first step as far as, uh, as the DACA folks, then yay, let's put something on the floor and let everybody vote and let everybody judge where their vote is. Mm -hmm. You do talk, sir, in your statement about the 800,000 immigrants who will be affected by the decision that Congress makes or the lack thereof, but you say that includes those serving in the military, working professional students, other contributing members of our society. So to that end, how do you want to see this resolved? Well, here's the thing, um, and, and this will be the most naive statement you probably hear maybe all year. If you scrub the politics out of this part of immigration in particular, the solutions are not hard. If it benefits the country, if you have people who are serving in the military, if you have people who are college graduates, if you have people who are productive members of the workforce, that sounds like a positive thing to me. Now, they have to earn that status so that, you know, the two bills are, is it five years, is it ten years, is it something in between? The bottom line is, if it benefits the country, why is it such a hard thing to vote yes or no on? I'm going to have to let that be rhetorical because I'm not in Congress. But I will say, let's move on to your read of the, of the president's meeting with uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. Is it a betrayal, as many of his backers, many Republicans are saying... Well, you, you know what? I mean, I, I don't know because I, I try not to, you know, in this business, when your house has plenty of windows in it, you're a little hesitant to throw rocks at either side of the fence. But I will say this, um, if it gets people in gear and it gets things moving, the history of Congress taking the bull by the horns is not excellent, shall we say. And therefore, it is America. Last time I checked, you can have dinner with whoever you want. So <laughs> if this gets folks uh, moving in terms of bringing something to the floor, then... Uh, you know, I hope they have some more. Uh, I hope they have some more dinners together. How do you feel about the deal reportedly discussed by the president? And the Democrats would not include funding for the border wall. Do you think that's a fair concession to make? Well, you know, I mean, first of all, let's talk about the quote unquote wall. It's 74 miles. I, I mean, seriously, 14 miles is replacing substandard stuff in uh, San Diego. 60 miles is actually new barrier in the upper Rio Grande Valley. Uh, my, my first response is, seriously, all of this for 74 miles? There's still well over 1,000 miles of, of uncontrolled border in the southwestern U.S. That's before you start counting Canada and the ports. So I, I'm not a big believer in the wall is a hill to die for. Bad pun, I understand. But in, in terms of, it's like, listen, put, put that vote up first. I'm happy to vote on both of them and see where we're at. But but. Let me just say this. If you look at the history of combining a whole bunch of immigration issues in one bill, you have to look no farther back than the Senate bill to see that when you do that, you'll find something for everybody to hate. Let every member of Congress vote up or down on the wall if you want to do it before the, uh, the DACA thing, fine, and then let them vote on a separate bill for the DACA stuff. Let's quit mixing too many ingredients into the recipe and let everybody be judged on those issues straight up. All right, sir. So considering you're part of this group of House Republicans who've been meeting to discuss all the fixes for immigration, are there any possible compromises on DACA that you are aware of that you see as having a, getting a, a, a shot, rather, of having a, a shot through Congress? Yeah, I, I think when you look at the two bills, I mean, both sides have done side by sides. We're, we're talking about we're talking about degrees of variation.
how long before you earn a, uh, a permanent resident status, how long you have to go to school, those sorts of things. Um, I think those are all imminently doable. The question is, can you depoliticize it enough to make some, some policy that makes sense, for, uh, for starters, for with the DACA folks? All right, Congressman Mark Amadei, Republican of Nevada, come see me again. Thank you.